TSB Talksport Business on Talk 100.3. It's great to have your company. 0586861003. If you would like to get in contact with us, well, our next guest is a veteran in the security industry with over a decade of direct technology security experience, spanning big technology companies like Verizon, at Yahoo, and Edgecast. He's currently working as a senior director in security management, security management at Edgeo, which is an edge-enabled software solutions provider powering unmatched secure digital experiences and he's just come off stage where he's been at JISEC at the Dubai World Trade Centre to join us via Zoom. Richard Yu, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Hey, thanks for having me here. It's good to uh, be here. Uh, first time at Dubai, so I um, hope uh, we have some great experience here. Well, I'm, I'm so sure Dubai definitely is a lot more than uh, just that little stage at JISEC. I'm sure that you'll be enjoying your stay here in uh, Dubai, Richard. Oh, I, I probably walk uh, more than five miles in the cities, um, so I got... Uh, the first days of Dubai um, in my first few days, um, it's, it's uh, I'll say it's exceeded my expectations, certainly. Good, good to hear. Someone who does a lot of walking around the city, I love it, because you, you'll find a great place to walk and then the road will just stop. So then you, you might find that a few times <laughs> and uh, it'll keep going. But look, at Dubai aside, you are here because you're speaking at JISEC and the idea of security, digital security, um, everyone is conscious about this more and more because every day we're needing two-factor or authenticity to log into our bank accounts and our email accounts. But um, over the last 12, sort of 18 months, in your experience, um, what, what have been the major forms of cyber attacks and what has that impact been on government and business? Uh, you know, like cybersecurity, you know, we, we like to think of the security as like some kind of hot course, you know, like issues with hackers with their hoodies on, you know, like a, that's working the obscure way. But, you know, cybersecurity actually impacts everybody's life. You know, if, if you ever have troubles buying like Taylor Swift tickets somewhere else or like if, if you're having troubles like getting a PS5, you know, that's that's because of uh, security issues that the botnet attack they're snatching out. In fact, that's actually one of the most prominent issues that we're seeing in over the last one to two years, the botnet attack was doing like account takeover, just doing inventory scrapings and scraping up all stuff that uh, everyone can uh, buy. Uh, obviously, there's also like an uh, increase in attack, especially DDoS attack nowadays because of evolving, you know, like geopolitical situations out there in the world that we're seeing a lot more DDoS attack towards your know, government agency. Recently, they have escalated to uh, start attacking healthcare's organization, you know, like the boundaries of what is the limitations when it comes to cybersecurity uh, changes nowadays. And, and uh, you know, like uh, the hackers are constantly pushing the boundaries, you know, like more and more nowadays. So when you say, you know, the boundaries are changing and every day one has to be prepared, what are those best practices that one has to follow irrespective of, uh, you know, whatever level of threats you're facing? Uh, well, I mean, as an individual, right, you know, always stay vigilant, just like, you know, when you're out in the street, you know, you practice like common, you know, common sense, you know, you, you got to practice common sense with, with your um, security practice, make sure your computers are locked, make sure you have two factor authentications, make sure you don't use the same password over and over again, you know, I have no idea how common it is, you know, oh, and, and guess what, you know, most of the attackers, um, they're, they're actually end users you know what we're saying as edgeo like we, we have infrastructures around and we're so close to the end user because we're, when we're close to the end user we're close to the attackers you know as, as an attackers that the attack often come from I, I guarantee you one of your devices somewhere in your office okay. is compromised and used as a robot to attack so who knows it might be your iphones right yeah um, well because so, I, I... So, you know, you gotta, I spoke to my dad today and uh, I mentioned uh, we had a cybersecurity expert on. He had a couple of questions for you. So so, so bear in mind, dad struggles, oh, wow. to, struggles with Zoom. But he was, he was wondering, uh, what is the best anti-software to get for his Mac? Are you, are you, do you oh. have any experience? Like, do we really need anti-software, uh, anti-virus software? Oh, well, you do. Um, but, um, well, it, it's, it's always the best practice. Um, there, there's actually many good providers out there, so I'm, I, I don't think it's my okay. place to That's recommend sorry, okay. what's the best product uh, for you. Oh, well, what, what about in relation to using VPNs for security? Is that something you'd recommend for m most users at home? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, like uh, for VPN, yeah, I, I know you guys uh, just use VPN to bypass Netflix geo restrictions. No, 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 uh, not at all. Never. Yes. No, no, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's, it's actually a good practice uh, to implement VPN. Like, if, if nothing at all, it's to ensure your privacy because a lot of VPN provides encryption so that, you know, 
the government agencies or whatever, like um, ISP cannot snip on your data, right? Uh, this way, like your communications can stay private. When I say communications, it's either verbal or like just internet communications in general can stay private. So it's, it's definitely a good policy. Um, there are just many VPN providers you can use on your phone or your computer. That's right. You know, but then uh, see, you know, one thing that is for sure, which is again, as you mentioned, that uh, you know, it's it's not it's common sense to keep those uh, security measures at uh, at at uh, hand. But it's not, as I say, that common sense is not very common. Not too many of us actually follow that trend. There are those challenges that we face on a daily basis. Multiple accounts that we have, uh, you know, all of us probably would have at least three to four email accounts, uh, you know, then Netflix and, and Prime and I don't know what all. And then some bunch of shopping websites that we shop from. How do we keep a tab of all of those passwords? Is, is there like a password creator or a password generator or a storage place where we can safely keep those passwords? Because for me, you know, I, I, I do maintain a little diary. I write them down. But then I'm, I'm scared that if I lose a diary, I'll probably lose everything. So, you know, I, I write those passwords in a cryptic way uh, so that anyone who even gets my, their, their hands on the diary will not be able to get that password correctly. Uh, what does one that's do? That's nice. You, you, that, that's right. You, you created a, your own cipher system to uh, actually obscure your, your password. You know, this is actually one of the most common issues. This is why... You know, corporations and, and like, you know, a lot of like uh, social media, whatever company that makes you sign it, right? They used to have a very complicated password policy. They make you like add special characters here and there. Capital. The problem is, right, the more complicated you make the password, the harder it is to remember, the easier for you to just write it down somewhere and like, you get hacked like this way. So nowadays, <laughs> like you could actually just, they will just make make it make your password long. You can type out Mary has a little lamb, the entire song as password. Uh, uh, we don't care. It actually might make it more secure. But like you said, I think one of the great things uh, is that that there, there's a lot of providers out there. But one of the good practice is to obviously use a password manager. But don't use the one that's prone to getting hacked because uh, there's there's <laughs> one major <password laughs> okay. manager. Uh, so you, you got you got to start using the 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 you, you know like the the reputable reputable one, right? And, and make sure you you always constantly keep up to date. Look up whether your password manager has been hacked. You know, if they do. Because you're locking all of your keys behind a vault, and you're trying to, and and if that vault get cracks, um, then the hacker has you know keys to the true. kingdom. Yeah, it's it's true, and we, we've all we've all heard those those stories of of it happening to people. Um, in, in your experience, in Richard, uh, your experience, Richard, looking over the next twelve to eighteen months, what do you see are some of the looming security uh, threats that that are going to be affecting governments and businesses? Oh well. There's actually a lot, you know, that there's always that evergreens, you know, attack, uh, like DDoS attack. You know? So this is only ever going to grow because I were uh, every year we're seeing re record breaking DDoS attack in terms of size. And this is only going to get bigger. Uh, we're also starting to see, like, especially government agencies, right? Um, sometimes the hackers attack, you know, they're, they're hacktivists, right? They're not oh, like always after your monies, right? So it's actually very important to maintain vigilance, uh, make sure that, um, uh, you uh, maintain backup because uh, ransomware is going to be um, an ongoing thing and it's going to be continue to be prolific. Uh, there's also botnet attacks. Make sure that whenever, especially government agency, if, it's, if it has a lot of data, especially user data, you always want to make sure that you want to prevent botnet from uh, trying to steal uh, any user account. Right. So these are some of the emerging threats that is going to be uh, pretty prominent for the next year and a half. Well, Richard, we, we do appreciate your time. Uh, Richard, you has, uh, we came off stage. He was at JISEC today. Uh, he's in town where he works for Edgeo, which is an edge-enabled software solutions provider powering unmatched, secure digital experiences. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Are you back on stage doing any more presentations at JISEC tomorrow? No, I've just done a four hours one, so um, I'm, I'm just going to be uh, hanging out. Uh, do do here. some sightseeing. So yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, Thanks for having me. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, we appreciate it. Richard, you, thank you very much. And if you do want to get down to JISEC, uh, you can. It's on for the next uh, couple of days. JISEC is at the World Trade Center. You can get tonight or it's there tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we hear so often about the password situation. Um, uh, but as Richard said, uh, the advice is, yeah, VPNs can be secure. And also, you know, I like your idea of having it in the diary because it can't get hacked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, no, keep, keep it in the diary, but then write your passwords in a way that uh, you, you have a code for it. So A is, is, a, a is probably B and B is equals to C and put that password in that fashion. TSB, Talk Sport Business on Talk 103.7.